My name's Mr. Sens and I'm a graffiti artist from London and I've been uh, doing graffiti for over 30 years and I currently kind of paint big murals all over the world. I started out in the kind of mid to late 80s. Yeah, I was about eight years old when I first kind of started and the whole kind of hip hop movement came over from New York and the first influence was the uh, what we call the graffiti art bible. It's called the book called Subway Art. So it was all the um, New York kind of trains being painted. So ever since we saw that, I was hooked. Up until about six years ago, I was uh, just doing kind of lettering still. I was doing like wild style lettering. You know, my style was still very different and um, obviously people in the kind of graffiti scene appreciated it, but apart from that, no one was really looking at it, you know, and it was getting a bit, just getting a bit boring. So as I say, you know, an artist is all about moving and progressing. So I've always, I've always wanted to kind of do portraits and stuff, but I never really tried it. So I kind of just got stuck in and kind of wanted to keep my graffiti kind of influence, which is really important. So I just started merging the portraits with the kind of graffiti lettering. So they were kind of, the graffiti lettering was kind of in the background. And so I just started experimenting and that's how my style kind of developed, you know? And then once, once I started doing the faces, I just got a bit obsessed by doing faces because once you start looking at all the different kind of tones and shapes, you get a bit carried away. And so uh, they obviously really inspire me. And the reason I do female faces is because I like the kind of curves and shape of the face and the features. It kind of fits my kind of style more. I've tried to do a couple of male faces before but it's not really happening. I definitely don't, I don't paint anyone, any of my family or anything like that. So, and I don't normally paint kind of famous people. So, it, so it's not really about who the model is. My work's kind of, it's more than the portrait, kind of looking into the soul. I almost like, I have a reference image, but when I create the wall, it become, they become their own creation, their own kind of character, you know? It's not about any particular person. It's about universal beauty, my work. That's why I'm, I don't use actual skin tones as well. It's not about where their, their background, or, or the colour of their skin, it's about universal beauty. The image I've chosen is, um, it's a woman who's kind of, so I mean my work, remember my work fits the kind of um, organic kind of seaside kind of thing because the shape, it feels very much like that anyway. So the image I've chosen is kind of like, a, almost like a kind of sea kind of goddess. So she's kind of underwater and you've got to look at it to kind of, to understand, but it's very flowing. And obviously I'm using kind of aqua colors as well. So it really fits in with a lot of the other murals. And uh, my process is almost completely freestyles. I basically just have a reference image and then I just kind of get lost in the whole process. So there's no kind of pre-plan, it's a very organic kind of instinctive um, way of working. So when I was younger, I did go to college. So I have kind of studies different forms of art and stuff like that. You know, I'd like to think my kind of artwork kind of crosses over into contemporary art. That's why I think different people, different age groups, groups can kind of appreciate it. It doesn't um, look just like stereotypical graffiti art or street art. So um, I'd like to think I cross over into the fine art world, maybe. There's quite an obvious difference between graffiti and street art. Um, graffiti is typography. so. So graffiti is basically lettering and street art started off as more kind of characters and illustration type stuff. So that's the kind of clear difference. They're both kind of people trying to express themselves on walls, you know, so for me, there shouldn't be much attention paid to the differences. It should be more about the similarities. Street art is, is about inspiring people and it's about inspiring the people who don't get the opportunity to go to galleries and who don't get that encouragement maybe at home to do art and stuff. So uh, it's really important that, that my work kind of reaches out to those people, you know, so I'm, I want to bring that kind of gallery quality kind of artwork onto the street and I want to kind of blow people's minds really. So they look at it and they kind of just get lost and it takes them away, you know? I've been lucky enough to travel all, like, all over to some amazing places and um, obviously the power of um, painting a mural on um, especially like a kind of rundown building or something that looks really gray and boring really kind of has a positive impact on, on the community and especially inspiring kind of young people and it tr can transform an area, you know? So something that feels quite safe, unsafe beforehand and quite rough can make it kind of bright and and just kind of safe and yeah, it can make a huge difference. I think it's brilliant what they're, what they're trying to do here, you know? Um, I come from a background of community art, so I, I've kind of been involved in similar projects in London and a few uh, in America as well, but um, this, is, this, is, this is really, really brilliant and that's why I was so keen to come here. And um, just by painting the wall in the last few days, I've had such a great response from the locals, so um, they really love it.
probably the one I've just finished in, in, in April in New York, which was um, like 10, 12 stories high over a busy street in Manhattan. It was so huge and it was just like freezing cold and it was just, there was just problem after problem. It was a nightmare. Almost killed myself doing it. Almost crushed my hand about 100 foot up on the lift up against the wall and stuff. So I, I look back at it now and it's, <laughs> You know, I like the piece, but it was uh, it was pretty tough, man. I just paint things on my own. I don't have assistance or anything, so it's uh, a lot of work. Yeah, when I was really young, obviously, I, I had some ridiculous tags. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think one of my first ones was uh, Evil Eyes. And then another another one, which is really bad. Basically, in the early 80s, there was the first ever advert on TV to use graffiti, was the Weetabix advert. And it was done by a guy called Artful Dodger. So when I was about eight, I think my first ever tag was Weetabix. Because <laughs> of the advert. <laughs> That's a good one for you. <laughs> So in terms of Mr. Sens, I started writing Sense, but with a C. And then, um, so eventually it became Sens. When I started doing just solely legal stuff, I kind of put a Mr. on there. So it kind of just showed the crossover from my past. And also there was another graffiti artist writing Sens as well. So it was important that I had a unique and individual name. Obviously when I was younger, I got arrested quite a lot. Cause, uh, uh, as I say, you know, I was, I was a graffiti artist. So, you know, there wasn't legal walls back when I was young, you know? So the only way you could learn your kind of trade was on the streets. So yeah, I got, I got arrested several times. It got to the point where it was like, right, okay, I need to, you know, start doing things a bit legally or it's gonna go, definitely go down the wrong path. That kind of made me go to college and stuff like that, you know, and do things a bit more legally. But yeah, recently, I haven't been arrested, but you know, police have stopped. But um, you know, I'm good at talking my, talking my way around things. I'm kind of sponsored by Molotow, which is just my favorite paint beforehand. I've always used Monito. I kind of like high pigment, you know, the, the paint really fades really nicely, you know, so um, yeah, for me it's the, the best kind of tool. I mean, in terms of caps, I work in quite a unique way, so it's all kind of fat caps normally. So I use Astro caps, New York fat caps, so it's all, it's all kind of big fades and, you know, one line kind of movements and stuff. In terms of collaborations, <laughs> there's lots of people I really like, you know, I love my abstract work, so um, for me a collaboration would be with someone who does really nice kind of abstract stuff so it fit with my style. I'm gonna have to go with someone who's not even a street artist. It would have to be Miro, who's a you know, kind of abstract expressionist who I love his work, yeah, yeah, and use of color. I've always got lots of things coming up, so um, lots more traveling, lots more murals, bigger, better, and then I'm always doing studio stuff. I'm always kind of pushing my work and progressing my works. I'm a very, very kind of busy artist. I'm painting all the time. So yeah, you'll see lots more from me in the future. For me, all I care about is being remembered as somebody who was kind of pushing things forward, doing something differently, individual, because for me, being individual and style is everything, especially in a really saturated scene. So um, I want to be remembered by other artists as someone who is technically very skillful. My advice to, to um, people out there starting out would be turn off Instagram. Stop looking at other people's work so much. There's so much out there that it can be distracting. I think I should focus on being original, which is almost lost in this day and age. I feel really passionate about it because it's it was one of the most important things when I was growing up in the graffiti world. If you copied someone's work, you get called out big time about it, you know, it just wasn't good. Nowadays, people just copy and buy it and they just don't care and it's just, that's just wrong, man. It's about being unique as well because if you're recognized for your style all over the world, that you're kind of halfway there, really. Just focus on drawing more and developing that style and stop looking so much.